you're watching election 2024 special transmission and I'm Sadia Samson. Pakistan's population 60% consists of youth and that is probably one of the reasons that we saw all the political parties in their campaigning engaging or trying to engage the youth and making promises like an education plan and creating employment. But with the similar uh, economic policy we have, can we really deliver what we are promising? We are going to shed some light on this today and are the youth of Pakistan really happy with what they have seen in Pakistan and are they really comfortable with the future? All these governments so far are promising for this youth. In the panel today we have Sidra Iqbal, our political commentator. We are definitely going to ask her about all these issues and with her we have Bilal Maimon our, our uh, economic and business uh, analyst. Sidra, first of all, I'll come to you. Um, we saw specifically People's Party uh, trying to portray that they have created a lot of uh, education uh, uh, opportunities for the youth lately and if the chance given, they will offer education card and uh, education plan for not just the uh, higher education but in the primary levels as well. Looking at the interior sin, we don't have the basic infrastructure for education, we lack a lot of things in that. But in next five years, considering all the political parties, do we think that we are standing where we can deliver what we promise as far as the education is concerned? So you're saying uh, the promise of Pakistan People's Party in terms of education. And other parties as well. I just gave an example of People's Party, but I know that we saw how uh, uh, P, uh, Pakistan Muslim League has been focusing specifically on higher education as well. I think when I look at uh, all the statements given by our policy makers and you know the statements and the slogans at uh, various rallies, it would be right to say that these are heavy on rhetoric but they are very light on concrete plans. How they, uh, they actually plan to do it is anybody's guessing game at the moment. Uh, very recently what has happened in the matriculation exams and the intermediate exams in Sindh is a, is a sign to tell. And recently we've been discussing things. I think whenever we th they talk about a higher education plan, uh, it completely ignores the fact that the ecosystem, the, the atmosphere, the, the facilities and the resources in Pakistan for higher education are actually comparable to sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. The number of young people we have and how they should be inclined, even today the number has been slipping despite HEC's best efforts. Uh, if you look at the people who are pursuing postgraduate studies or PhDs in Pakistan, it's less than 5% of the population. Uh, the, the, the crisis or the challenge is so dire that even when they plan to have education cards or set up universities, there are no real academics. Uh, you know, there's, there's a huge gap when it comes to the academics being available to teach these subjects. So, uh, you know, when I look at these statements, even when they would focus and they would address it in rallies, the unfortunate reality is it is all rhetoric. How are you going to deliver it? How are you actually allocating funds to it? What is your government spending like? Um, that is all up in the air. A lot of people did have a question about the people, number of people who went abroad in order to seek better career or to see yeah. um, or to pursue their education, I may say. And most of them, if you talk to them, uh, if you go uh, a little deep and have a research on them, most of them won't or might or don't want to at least come back to Pakistan and serve back Pakistan. We seem to be very happy for the fact that these Pakistanis are going abroad and we are okay and we are okay with it. But do you feel that if you are not going to provide them with the kind of education they want to receive, they don't they are not left with much options rather to go abroad and study and maybe not come and look for their future abroad only. Sadia, honestly leaving your home is never an option. Like look at people who have had to move countries or move their places or leave their homeland because they've been hit by conflict, they've been hit by genocide, there has been active either a war happening there and they have been climate refugees as well. Hmm. Some places are becoming highly unlivable. But in Pakistan, the problem and the reason why skilled and semi-skilled young people are leaving the country, you're very right, it's because of the hopelessness, it is because of the uncertainty, there's no faith left in the system. Although I would not buy into the kind of uh, dismissive behavior that some of our policy makers have had. You know, we've had very, uh, you know, people in important offices make a statement that if they're leaving, that's that's nobody's business and it's really not a caution. And Varadha Kakar Sahib said, uh, one of the pressers he was addressing to, he said that it's a 
uh, it's very uh, you know great that people are leaving Pakistan because from there they're going to send the remittances. But that is not we are what we are going to rely Senator, on. I think his statement came out to be very tone deaf, and we have to agree to that. I mean, he's not a populist leader. He's not been democratically elected. But even somebody in the prime minister's office making such an insensitive statement doesn't come out. I can only guess and this is a sentiment that has been uh, sort of echoed by many analysts that how will Pakistan be able to come out of the present day crisis. Uh, you have not a lot of things to export, the ma market dynamics are not in your favor, the cost of producing anything, manufacturing anything in Pakistan is going up. So mm. I think what he's perhaps pointing out to the fact is that remittances, the overseas remittances sent by overseas Pakistanis yes. back to the country is a huge and important revenue stream for Pakistan. So immediately what he's pointing out to is that if the doctors, engineers, nursing staff, these people are able to go abroad, they will still have roots in Pakistan and some remittances will come Pakistan's way. Uh, yes, it's a good short term stitch, but it is again making an assumption that all these people are going to find employment, number one. All these people will continue to send money back to Pakistan and then most importantly, we are not taking into account the gap that they are leaving behind. Mm. If they are doctors, if they are engineers, Correct. Pakistan at this point in time needs these highly skilled people who have been and this is not just like the bottom of the pyramid these are skilled people the country yes. the state has spent about 20 years of resources they've enjoyed mm. the best of facilities that Pakistan has to offer and when it has come to a point where we could be harnessing the dividend of this investment sure. they're deciding to leave the country exactly. so it's definitely something that should be alarming to the policy makers I believe right and when we say that the 70 percent of your youth uh, of your population is youth and you're relying on them you want to work for them but then they're leaving and then you're not ready to make them comfortable with your policies with that I'll come to you Bilal do you feel with the similar economic policy we have right now we can really deliver what Ever we are promising, considering every political party, like the education plan or the employments. I mean, we know that we are not manufacturing much, as Sidra mentioned. Otherwise, as well, we depend highly on the remittances as far as the dollars that come from outside to our country. And then look at the electricity. On the capacity charges, we spend all that dollars and we have to pay back in dollars. So there is this huge. Uh, economic policy flaw that we see and this has been going on since long like years and years and years so with the similar economic policy do you feel that we will be able to deliver in terms of education or employment that we are looking up to okay i'm just going to add one point um, to whatever has been discussed there are broadly two kinds of uh, labor that proceed abroad for employment purposes one is the semi-skilled hmm. um, unskilled labor that goes uh, out of Pakistan because they don't have the opportunity here Mm. or they feel that they'll earn more when they move abroad. Mm. The other is a skilled labor like Sidra mentioned. <clears throat> the problem with the f second one, the skilled one, apart from the fact that they will now be stationed abroad and the skill will go away from Pakistan, the other uh, problem is that they don't actually send back remittances. Mm. Because they're skilled and because they come from a reasonably affluent background where they can afford to go abroad because they have the skill set, they don't actually go send money back to their homes because their homes don't rely on their remittances to run their household. So when you think of wealth transfer, you're not essentially just looking at the skill transfer, but you're also looking at that particular skill set taking away the wealth from Pakistan as well. So you won't really necessarily get a lot of remittances from them because they'll be making their wealth abroad. They'll be buying houses and vehicles abroad. They will not transfer that wealth back, back to Pakistan. Uh, with the other group, when, when you, you talk about unskilled labor, they do send their remittances back, but then they're not employed at highly uh, growth opportunities. That means they're not earning enough that they're going to send it back to Pakistan. So if we are depending on that, that number of dollars or those remittances, probably they're not going to be enough for us. When you compare it to the need we have for dollars that's ever increasing, it's never going to match up. Right. So I, I, Personally speaking, I've never thought that remittances is the right way to go about uh, right. creating and that, that happens to be a very short term policy yes. and probably we'll have to make changes or shift our priorities. With that, I'll end this session here. We'll take a break and come back.